All right, Alexander, let's uh, answer the questions from uh, the live stream with uh, Brian at the new Atlas. And let's begin with, uh, actually, you answered this from Sanjeva. Alexander, do you remember ever a time when academics were assassinated and the West being indifferent? I know this happened in South Central uh, with CIA knowledge, but Daria Dugina's killing seems more chilling, doesn't it? You actually answered that. Yeah, I did absolutely uh, answer it. I, mean, I, yeah. I, I, yeah. I don't right. remember, not not in recent yeah. times. I mean, it, you know, during the Cold War, maybe things like that did happen. But I don't remember anything like that in recent times. Yeah. Uh, Deborah says, uh, yay, I learned about the Duran from Brian. Thank you, Deborah. Mark says, does anyone know what Trump's position is on Taiwan and Ukraine? Yeah, I mean, he was against Pelosi's trip and he wants peace in Ukraine. So he's not somebody who I think anybody would say was soft on China. He was the person who imposed all those tariffs on China. But he thinks this uh, um, goading of China over Taiwan is reckless. And he is basically somebody who wants to see some kind of peace in Ukraine and an end, a reversal of the Biden administration's policies there. So, I mean, he's been fairly clear about this as far as I can see. All right. Uh... Transanska Baba, thank you for that uh, super sticker. Ivan Gertsen, thank you for that super sticker. Summer of 1970, thank you for that super sticker. And Elena, thank you for that super sticker. Commander Crossfire says, the level of restraint being demonstrated by Russia has reached the level of the absurd. At some point, it may hurt to hurry, but hurt worse to be safe. Yeah, I, 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 one comes again, up against this point repeatedly, and I do understand the uh, feeling many people have that they want to see this thing over and done with as soon as possible. I mean, at a fundamental level, so do I. I mean, I'd like to see this war end as quickly as possible. But I think that putting aside the military considerations, I think that there are very strong political reasons why the Russians are playing this in the way they are. I mean, one of the things that they've managed to do and I've discussed this at length in a video I've done for my channel, which is uh, by, by acting with restraint, they won over world opinion to their side. And that isn't a small thing. In fact, it's been a critically important thing at this particular uh, uh, time period. And also, you've got to consider uh, feelings that many Russians have about Ukraine. I've had a long email about this from a Russian private email, who says that, you know, Russian public opinion, many, many Russians have relatives in Ukraine, they would feel very, they would be troubled if there was the kind of unrestricted all-out war against Ukraine that many people are saying. From a Russian point of view, things are going according to plan. They're winning the war. They're not restricted by the clock. They're not fighting this war to the calendar. They're not worried about our timetables or our concerns or our desires to see the war end as quickly as possible. They're doing it in a way that suits them. And, you know, that may be difficult for other people, for us, but that's, that's I think, what uh, the Russians, the Russians will not change their course on this. All right, David S., thank you for that super sticker. Chakrij, thank you for that super sticker. Commando Crossfire says Angola is a player to watch. Huge resources, potential, very poor and ripe for development. It looks to be leaning towards the east like the rest of Africa. Absolutely. And I understand that, by the way, Angola is one of those countries where the Angolan elite prepares to, prefers to send its children to China and Russia for their education as opposed to the United States. Now, there's a long history here. Uh, uh, because, of course, Angola received a huge amount of support from the Soviet Union during the independence war and then the subsequent conflict with South Africa. And, of course, Cuba had a major presence in Angola for a very, very long time. So you can already see that the political connections with, you know, what, you know, with the Eurasians are already established. Yep. Um, Michael, thank you for that super sticker. 
Uh, Sajeva, part one of two. Brian, you are amazing, and your analysis on Sri Lanka spot on. It's unfortunate that leaders of the third world have kids studying or migrated to the West or assets there, which are often used as leverage. Often third world leaders act against the interests of their country to serve the commercial interests of the West. Case in point is Sri Lanka buying expensive oil from Oman when cheap Russian oil is on offer. Yeah. Brian kind of answered that question as well, but I, I don't know if you have any... Anything to add well, to absolutely. And I just Alexander. remind people that, you know, uh, uh, at an earlier point in the crisis, Lavrov, the Russian foreign minister, actually spoke about the kind of leverage that's, that uh, the West has over um, leaders in the global south. So he said that he knew of cases where diplomats from the global south had been told that if their countries voted the wrong way in, um, gen in the General Assembly, then their children might be deprived of places in U.S. universities. Now, that's what Lavrov said. I mean, it may be true, it may not be true. I believe him. I think I'm sure it is true. Um, but, you know, it's another, another illustration of the point that um, has just been made. Right. Arctic Knights says Putin just announced to expand the Russian military by 140,000 men. Is that a propaganda defeat for Russia? We answered I, this think as well. answered, I think Actually. that answered that question. And by the way, yeah. it's routine. It's no now, I, I, I've actually been reading more about this. And as I said, not only is it routine, it is fully consistent with a plan that was announced back in 2018 to increase the Russian military and in particular the Russian uh, professional part of the Russian military. So it's just, it's just a continuation of that plan. It has no bearing on the war in Ukraine. Michael Harvey, thank you for that super sticker. Truth Seeker, thank you for that super chat. JF, thank you for that super chat. And Michael Harvey, thank you again for another super sticker. Commander Crossfire says, if you were a betting man, who gets to Mars first? Who gets to Mars first? To Mars, um, to Mars, the planet. Mars. Oh, to Mars first. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, right, Mars, gosh. Mars, yeah. Hmm, good question. I'd say, I'd say Russia, China. I think they'll be working on it together. <laughs> I'll think that, I think they'll probably get there first. But then what do I know about such things? Probably not very much. Uh, Sam Info, thank you for that super sticker. Raphael says, it is like I am watching a wrestling match now, a big exhibition game. Nobody wants to throw the TKO punch. Tell me what the USA and Russia wants. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I understand that. I mean, I think the Russians have made very clear what they want. They want a Ukraine that is not in NATO and uh, uh, um, the independence of Donbass and Crimea recognised and protection for Russians in Ukraine. Now, of course, with every day that passes, you, protection for Russians in Ukraine means the separation of their territories from Ukraine and their incorporation into Russia. That is what the Russians want. I think what the US started with, what they actually wanted from this conflict, was regime change in Moscow. Now, I think that was what they started out with. They wanted a conflict in Ukraine. They wanted an economic crisis in Russia. That was what the sanctions were all about. And they were expecting that it would lead to a political crisis and the fall of President Putin, which hasn't happened. So you have a realistic objective which is being implemented from the one side, an unrealistic and failing objective on the other. And I think from this point on, the US is at something of a loss to define its uh, intentions, its goals in Ukraine um, clearly. All right, uh, Zach here, thank you for that super sticker. Chris Palmares says, what are your thoughts on the YT channel? P, P run. I, I don't know it, to be honest. I don't know it. I don't Perun, know it. Perun, I don't know it. No. Peru and Peron. Sounds, okay. sounds we'll, we'll check like it out. Slavic, uh, yeah. Slavic god of war, as I remember. But I don't, I don't know anything don't know. about it. Uh, Sam, Sam, thank you for that super sticker. Chetset.1 says, what would be the Chinese people's reaction if a potential invasion was to fail or go very badly? Actually, Brian definitely answered yeah. that one. Yeah. So I, I'm going to add a quick uh, observation of my own. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to quick, quick, quick observation of my own to this, which mm -hmm. is that I think that the, for such an important matter, the Chinese leadership will make absolutely sure that it doesn't fail. <laughs> I mean, they will prepare this thing in such detail. They will look at every single eventuality that could happen and they will prepare on a massive scale 
to ensure that he doesn't fail. And I think they have the resources to do it. Uh, Denitza says, I was amazed when speaking with relatives and they were explaining how the MSM is full of propaganda, but at the same time, they believe the BS coming out from the mainstream media. Yeah, I mean, I've had the, I think we've all come across this problem many times. I mean, I, ha I come across it regularly. People will tell you, you know, that the media tells you lies and then they go on and believe it. But there it is. Yeah. Um, Bogdan says, yay, Duran. Hello to all three of you. Thank you for all the work you do. Our minds nimble and informed. Much, much love to you from Serbia. Thank you, Bogdan, for that. Colin, thank you for that super sticker. Radovid, thank you for that super sticker. Sendeg, go, thank you for that super chat. Uh, Commander Crossfire says, I think there is 100% odds the U.S. would nuke China over Taiwan. It would be an existential threat to the globalist idea, like can't even be imagined. Well, I hope you're wrong, and I believe you are. I don't think the United States would want to nuke China over Taiwan. I think American public opinion would obviously oppose it, but I don't think that they would want to precipitate a full-scale nuclear confrontation with China, which is a nuclear power, over Taiwan. I'm going to add something else, that the Thai Chinese themselves are aware of this danger, and of course they're now busy building up their nuclear weapons arsenal to counter the United States and to make a credible threat to the United States that if the United States were to take such a step, then it would face for itself overwhelmingly devastating consequences. Matt Las X says, century of humiliation in China in the 1990s for Russia should be something that the American Southerners can relate with regards to the hundred years after the Civil War. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure they could. They should. Whether they do, of course, is another matter. Yeah. Uh, Vinicius Arcaro says, what better explains European leadership, a vocation to subservience or low intelligence? Why are the two, why are the two mutually exclusive? I, I would say that the one, low intelligence, leads to the other, a tendency towards subservience. I think the answer is both. At this time, I think the answer is both. I think the political system, the structures of the European Union have created a system whereby people of, shall we say, inadequate ability achieve positions of power in Europe. And I think also people are selected for leadership positions because of their tendency to subservience, both to the European center in Brussels, and of course to the globalist center, the global center, which is in Washington. All right, Raul Pinto says, welcome Brian to the number uh, number one real, politi real politic community on the internet. Keep it up guys. Mm -hmm. Thank you Raul thank for you. that. Mr. Tommy, thank you for that super chat. LK, thank you for that super chat. Michael Wynn, thank you for that super sticker. Through the eyes of says, great conversation. Thank you to Brian, very eloquent guest. Thank you for that. Uh, Roy Wilkinson, Wilkinson says, serious question, how do we get rid of our ruinous political banking and media class? Humanly sigh. How do we? Well, that, of course, is the big, big question. And the first thing we need to do is we need to increase general awareness that there is such a class and about what it is doing. Then, I mean... I've said many times we need to recapture our democracies. That means we need to establish our, you know, alternative media channels. We need to organise. Saying all of these things is easy. Doing them is, of course, incredibly difficult. But my own personal view is that sooner or later it will happen. It will happen because ultimately it always does. The kind of... Um, system that we have at the moment is unsustainable and at some point it will provoke a reaction. Raphael says one thing we are all missing regardless how this war in Ukraine ends Russia will invade Alaska soon after Russia is not <laughs> running from fighting the US. Th well, thank you for that Raphael. I think they gave up on Alaska in 1867 yeah. when they sold it <laughs> to the US so I don't think they're particularly um, interested in getting it back. A 
A.K. Lee says, received through WhatsApp on August 13th, a group of foreign fighters were on flight to Taiwan from the U.S. and many were clean-cut men and sat like soldiers. The couple mentioned almost an infantry of soldiers on this flight. Possible. Actually, Brian answered that one in Absolutely. detail. Yeah. A.K. Yeah. Lee, thank you for that. 456123G says, global problems require global cooperation. Good men must demand this if they're of their governments, the prophet's wife. Yeah. Thank you for that. Four, five, six, T, one, two, three, G. Uh, Liam Barrett says, thank you, Duran, for providing the best geopolitical discussion and analysis program around, bar none. Question, any chance of seeing Colonel Douglas McGregor on the show? Yeah, I'm absolutely. A big admirer uh, in Dublin, Ireland. Yes, uh, absolutely. And can I just say, I mean, we are trying again to get in touch with him. He, by the way, he's got his own channel now, but um, we, uh, uh, we are trying to get in touch with him. Um, he's busy. Uh, Laug66 says, uh, I work for a large Western energy company. The weakness of government leaders resembles leadership in this company. Nepotism is endemic. Do you agree? Yeah, I've heard the same. And it isn't just, of course, in energy companies. Um, I know the banking industry you know, from a certain point of view. And I, 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 you know, I know people who worked in the banking industry, and they tell me the same thing. There are major problems with the way... Um, <laughs> shall we say, leadership positions, not just in politics, but in certain corporates, uh, are filled. And um, these problems have become endemic. Rick Wang, thank you for that super chat. Uh, Alex, thank you for that super chat. John Olaf Johansson, thank you for that super chat. And Budweiser, thank you for that super sticker. AZ Mary says, when do you think the U.S. will run out of money and will not print any more debt? Only then... The U.S. will not be able to finance any more foreign wars. I don't think that day is that far off. Uh, it may not be immediately there, but I think we're c closing in on the day when it's going to happen. I mean, just, just look at one of the pieces of news we've just heard, which is that Saudi Arabia, which is now obviously flirting with joining the BRICS, has just said that if the United States lifts oil sanctions on Iran, it's going to cut oil production. Saudi Arabia is going to cut its own oil production so that if oil production increases in Iran, to Saudi Arabia will reduce production to compensate. Now, that is a direct assault on U.S. economic interests. And Saudi Arabia, of course, buys U.S. treasuries. It buys U.S. debt. It's clearly becoming disenchanted with uh, of the whole financial architecture in the United States, and we see daily more signs of it. And that's the Saudis. And, of course, if the Saudis are there, and, you know, they're long-standing allies of the U.S., lots of other people must be thinking the same way. Commander Crossfire says, Ukraine celebrating Independence Day is like Zelensky celebrating sobriety, a fantasy. A house divided cannot stand. Russia must be made whole again. Yeah. Thank and you for that, Commander Crossfire. That. Uh, Lana... Lana A. Zankova, thank you for that super sticker. Summer of 1970 says, Patriotism is the last refuge of scoundrels. Thank That's you for that, from Summer. Dr. Johnson. <laughs> That's from Dr. Johnson. But of course, do bear in mind that he was a patriot. He didn't mean that patriotism was bad. He said that scoundrels hide behind it. Uh, Chris Chen says, Three of you make the perfect team. Brian's knowledge about Asia is exceptional. Thank you. Thank you, Chris, for that. Rudolph says, Russia progress is slow to keep death rates low and therefore keep supporting Russia high and to make Europe economically suffer as long as possible. So people's minds and priorities will switch from Ukraine to their own pockets. Yeah, I think this is well said. perfectly true. Well said. By the way, uh, yeah. Shoigu, the Russian defense minister, has said something very similar. Yep. Uh, and Marx, thank you for that super sticker. K.H. Saw says the U.S. must take care of its citizens before it's too late. Well said. Um, Duck Life says, I was talking to a Japanese friend today who said the Japanese who live in the areas where the U.S. has bases, the Japanese hate the U.S. being there. Brian actually answered that question in he detail did. as well. Thank you for that, Duck Life. And John Matthew says, first, great respect that you recognize uh, D.E. in my last uh, question again to the DE gas problem. Gas and electricity is expensive here. Can uh, German industry survive? Um, I think German industry is under more pressure than it has 
been since the end of the Second World War. If these policies are persisted with, it won't survive. And I don't see, I don't see a convincing alternative at the moment. Um, Ivan Gutson, thank you for that super sticker. Michael and Lucia, thank you for that super chat. Zarael says, the assumption has been made that Daria was actually the intended target as she was being shadowed across from her flat. This woman was on her tail. Goodness knows. I mean, I, 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 I still think it was more likely Dugan himself. But, I mean, that is something that only an investigation and a um, interviewing of the suspect and of finding out of all the answers would be able to establish conclusively. So, you know, I, I can only guess one way. Zarel, you're guessing another way. Whatever, whatever the actual target was, whether it was Dugin or Daria, it was a terrible murder. It was a, it was a wicked thing to do. Summer of 1970 says, repeal the Patriot Act, reinstate Glass-Steagall, repeal the Telecommunications Act, repeal the NDAA, reinstate the Fairness Doctrine solutions. Absolutely, all good solutions. Absolutely, I would support all of those. Uh, Jerry Fairchild says, Citizens United versus FEC decision subordinated the people to the U.S. to the corporations. Agree? Yes, I, I, I have to say, I think it was one of uh, uh, Antonin Scalia's worst decisions, actually. And I'm a fan of Scalia overall. But I think this particular decision was, was, was wrong and bad in its effect. Yeah. Um, Tim Gibson, thank you for that super sticker. Michael uh, Zemrowski says, be smarter than all your mates down the pub. Join the Duran. Thank you for that, Michael. Uh, Jerry Fairchild said, uh, super sticker, Jerry Fairchild, thank you for a super sticker. Uh, Tommy Putra says, please invite Mr. Mario Cavallo on China economy. Okay. Thank you. We will we'll check him out, definitely. Him out Mario Cavallo, thank you for that. Uh, Ralph Peterson says, thanks for your educational work. Thank you, Ralph. April says, you guys are amazing. Thank you, April. Kuplex says the U.S. has recommended that all U.S. citizens still left in Ukraine should leave immediately. Right. Are they closing down the embassy in Kiev, too? Does it include U.S. volunteer soldiers, too? Uh, I think both of you answered this question yeah, on the live stream. I think we did. I mean, certainly yes, Bri Brian did. I can remember very clearly. I mean, yeah. It's a game the U.S. is always playing. You know, one day they say everybody should leave and everybody goes back and they do it backwards and forwards. And we shouldn't take yeah. these things too seriously. Yep. Uh, Michael, thank you for that super sticker. Cactus Ray, thank you for that super sticker. Adam, thank you for that super chat. Claire, thank you for that super sticker. Uh, Tech Wong, thank you for that super sticker. Michael Yudik, thank you for that super sticker. And Elza says, what I heard about the Communist Party in China treats Chinese reminds me of what my Protestant family had to suffer in the USSR. I believe Brian yeah, well, answered, I, answered I that one as did, well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. Thank you, Elza, for that. Uh, Dan, thank you for that super chat. Paul, thank you for that super chat. The Touring Jedi says, guys, your thoughts on demilitarization of EU countries. Germany stocks are getting depleted. There was also talk about the U.S. Army giving up their HIMAR missiles directly from a training ground. Uh, actually, both of you answered that. Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, I've also heard about the HIMARS being... Oh, absolutely. Actually, all, lot, yeah. all kinds of weapons being given up from training. Yeah, yeah. I know. Absolutely. I think I think we are... Getting to the point, by the way, where the Pentagon is starting to say as an enough is enough. I mean, this $3 billion deal, but not a deal, this package, which isn't really a package, is a sort of, you know, ordering weapon systems. It, it, it's, you know, just to be sent to Ukraine in three years' time. I think it's also a, a, a not-so-subtle way of saying, you know, um, we're, we're not going to send any more weapons on the kind of quantities that we have been saying out of our own stocks. From now on, it has to be new production. And if you have to wait three years, we'll stuff it. I think this is, I think this is partly what uh, this is all about. And by the way, I think Zelensky himself is rather unnerved by this $3 billion package and the way it's structured, because over, his last, over the course of his last telephone conversation with Biden, he apparently brought it up and Biden had to reassure him that this doesn't actually mean that um, support for Ukraine is slackening. Yeah. 
get to your contracts in before the war ends. That's what that was about. Anyway, uh, Cool exactly. Ray says, what can Absolutely. we do to avoid World War III? Joe Obama is destroying the U.S. Well, we have to, um, we have to organize to oppose the drift of events. And I'm afraid we have to also recognize that we, you can't just rely on the Republican Party. I mean, some Republicans, like Lindsey Graham, Mitch McConnell, whatever, are fully signed up for this whole thing. And um, the first thing to do is to support independent Congress people, and, you know, independent, you know, Republicans who are opposed to this sort of thing, and to make sure that they're voted in in big numbers in the elections, the midterm elections in November. Now, I, you know, I. I I, I, I'm, I'm not politically partisan about the United States because, of course, I'm not an American citizen. But on a question of war and peace, it seems to me it's unequivocal. At a time like this, you vote for the candidate who stands for peace. Paul, thank you for that super chat. K.H. Saw says, spot on. Brian, thank you for that. Terry's tune, thank you for that super chat. Stan Littman says, Jacob Schiff wanted to steal Siberia, so attacked from Wall Street in 1904. I don't know about this story. I'm afraid this is something unusual to me, but uh, uh, stealing Siberia, even in 1904, must have been a pretty tall order, I would have thought. Sean Darby, thank you for that super chat. Great stream. Thank you for that. Ralph Peterson says, Ho Chi Minh so admired the U.S. that he recited Declaration of Independence on his capital's steps, he asked the U.S. to help throw out French Western occupation, was ignored, therefore forced to turn to communist China for help. Yeah, I mind you, I mean, you know, that all of that is true, but Ho Chi Minh was a committed communist at the same time, with a very long record of involvement in communist activities. I believe he'd been to Moscow in the 20s, for example. So don't underestimate that side of his uh, political background as well. I mean, he may have admired the United States in the interwar years. It was possible to be both a communist and, to a certain extent, admire the United States. But it doesn't mean that he was any the less a communist because of it. Bitcoin says LBC is hitting a one-year high versus BTC. Free speech is winning. Thank, Thank you, you for you. that. Uh, Euro Gabor says Hungarian FM says the country is not interested to restrict the movement of Russian citizens with the Schengen zone and further sanctions on energy is a no go. EU Hungary gap is widening by the day. Yes, it is. I agree. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Um, Upgrade Sankara says the IMF and World Bank have the purpose of keeping the global south poor. Michael Hudson says this all the time. Yeah, I know he does. I know he's right. But this, this, this is the effect um, but, of course, um, the global south is not as easy to control anymore as it used to be. And it isn't quite as poor as it was. Parts of it are becoming very rich now. Yep. Uh, Upgrade Sankara says, uh, did you know that Taiwan politician who said every time the U.S. comes to the island, it asks them to expand their military? Yeah, uh, Bri I, Brian I th answered this Brian eventually. Brian that one, yeah. Yes, uh, Bitcoin, thank you once again for that super chat. And also from Bitcoin, supposedly a live stream updates, but I don't really get it. Okay. Thank, thank you for that super chat. Bitcoin and uh, L. Boone, this one we answered as well. I keep hearing from many sources now that Germany seems to be unable to get their act together. How much of it stems from incompetence and how much of it stems from the fact that they are hosting U.S. military on their soil, i.e. being dependent on the U.S.? Uh, and we discussed this at length. I mean, we, to a certain we, we, to we great extent, this, yes. it's both. It's both. Yeah. Uh, Steve HKH says, EU run by children leaders now. SK and Japan is a U.S. stooge, South Korea and Japan. Yep. U.S. stooge. I, 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 I agree with that. What I would say about South Korea is I think it's a little bit more um, diverse than Japan is. I think there's a there's a there's a more sophisticated political discussion about these things in South Korea than there is in Japan. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is everything. And that's it. Yeah, that's a great live stream. Thank you very much to everybody. Great live stream. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. The Take care.